What's up, everybody? Josh Cripps here, and in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you five awesome things you didn't know about layer masks. Okay, number one, let's take a look at this image. You might be saying, yeah, that's okay, but you know what, Josh? It needs a little contrast, and I agree with you. So we come down here, we pop on a curves adjustment layer, and we drag our highlights up, and we drag our shadows down. Now, I'm looking at the sky here. I really want to add that contrast and drama to the sky, and I'm going, yeah, buddy, that looks pretty sweet. But you know what doesn't look sweet is all of the extra contrast that that put into my trees and my mountains, and these darker clouds over here, that is a little much. So, how can I restrict this curves adjustment only to the sky and this reflection. Well, you could just kind of, you know, do a gradient thing or paint on with your paintbrush, but there's a better way. Oh yes, there is a better way. If you go to image, apply image, what Photoshop does after you click OK, you can just leave all the default settings, is it creates a grayscale copy of your photo and it applies that grayscale copy as a layer mask. So holding Alt or Option, click on that layer mask thumbnail, this is the layer mask that Photoshop just generated for us by clicking that apply image. And as you guys know, what happens with layer masks is that wherever is dark, such as the trees and the mountains, the adjustment is applied less. And wherever is bright, like these clouds, the adjustment is applied more. And that's exactly what we wanted, right? We want that adjustment to be applied in the sky and the reflection and not as much in the mountains. So if I turn that back off, this is what our adjustment looks like now. This is what it looked like before. You can see how we've gotten rid of all of that extra ugly contrast. Very, very cool. But you can see if I turn off the adjustment that it maintained that contrast in the clouds. Very, very neat. So apply image. That's a really, really easy, quick way to target adjustments just to the brightest parts of your image. If you wanted to target adjustment to the darkest part, you could do the same thing, and then once it's generated in the layer mask, just hit Control or Command I. That'll invert the mask so that your adjustments are being applied only to the darker parts of the image. Sweet. But say you're looking at this going, you know, I actually kind of like some contrast in the tree, in those trees in the mountains. I don't want to lose all that contrast. How can I bring some of that contrast back? Well, let's see, you got this opacity thing here. Let me slide that around. No, that's not helping. That's just reducing the effect. What we need is a way to adjust opacity for the layer mask itself. If you double click on that layer mask thumbnail or click on the properties button in your little toolbar, this flyout appears and it has this slider called density. And density is to layer masks exactly what opacity is to layers. In other words, as I reduce the density of this slider, what happens is that my layer mask becomes less and less visible. Watch as I do that. As I slide the density down towards zero, all of that darkness of my layer mask disappears and it becomes a pure white mask. Meaning that when the density is zero, the mask is applied universally, or the adjustment is applied universally. When the density is at 100, the adjustment is applied entirely through that mask. And for density somewhere in the middle, it's a combination. So as I slide this density down and my layer mask becomes fainter and fainter, that adjustment is being applied less through the mask and more universally. So you can use that to fine tune the exact amount of adjustment you want via the mask and the adjustment you want universally. Very, very cool. Now say that this, you like this, but you want to really target the adjustment to just those clouds, just those bright clouds and just the reflections. How can you do that? Well, cool thing number three is that you can, you can apply a curves adjustment or levels adjustment directly to a layer mask. So the way you do that, you click on your layer mask thumbnail, then you hit Control or Command M to bring up curves or Control or Command L to bring up levels. I like curves. I'm a curves man myself. Now, well, let me bring up the actual layer mask so you can see what happens. As I adjust this curves, 
you'll see that the layer mask is changing. And what I'm basically doing is I'm making the mask more and more binary so that the brightest bits of the image are more highly selected and the darker bits of the image are less selected. So everything was sort of partially selected before and now that I've applied this curves adjustment we have this really clear dividing line between the things that are selected and the things that are not selected. So if I show you the before and after of that adjustment what you'll see is that this is the before and this is the after and what's happening is that take a look at the clouds there you'll see that the adjustment is being applied more and more to those clouds and less and less to the darker parts of the image so if you want to fine-tune your mask further you can apply a curves or levels adjustment directly to your mask and that is cool thing number three now say that you wanted to add another oops now let's say you wanted to add another adjustment that matches what's happening with this curves adjustment say you realize you've added this contrast but what's also happened is this kind of subtle warm tone that you get from the afternoon sunlight is being washed out as we make those clouds brighter and brighter so how can we bring that back well I would suggest you start with a hue saturation level layer and you just crank that guy way up but what happens when you crank it up to an extreme degree is that the rest of your image starts to look like it was hit by a paint shotgun and that is not what we want we only want that adjustment applied to the brightest parts of the image right so how can we take this layer mask that we created for the curves adjustment and apply that to our hue saturation layer as well there's three ways you can do it and I'm gonna blaze through them right now one is you create what's called a clipping mask and you can do that by holding alt or option and clicking right in between the two layers you'll see that it brings up this little arrow meaning that it's clipped the other way is you can right click on the layer that you want to click clip and create clipping mask so what's happening is this little arrow is indicating that this hue saturation layer is now attached to this curves layer meaning that it only shows up where that curves layer shows up so if I turn off that curves layer the hue saturation la layer also turns off uh, now if you look at the difference this is gonna be I'm gonna unclip them so watch the hue saturation of the image now when I clip it to that curves layer you'll see that it's only applied where that curves layer it is visible so that's a great way to target your adjustment just to uh, another mask or adjustment like that that's way number one you can do it way number two is you can if you hold control or command and click on the layer mask thumbnail of the mask that you want to duplicate it'll load it as a selection then when you have this loaded as a selection you can go ahead and add the adjustment that you want and it automatically turns that selection into a layer mask for that adjustment so now we can crank up our saturation and it's going to do the exact same thing the other way you can do it oops wrong button is if you hold alt or option and then click and drag the layer mask thumbnail onto the new adjustment it'll ask you if you want to replace the layer mask you just click yes and then look what happened boom it created that exact same layer mask so that's three easy ways you can apply one adjustment just to the exact same spots as you applied another adjustment now the last cool thing that I want to show you guys even though we've targeted this hue saturation just to the brightest parts of the image you might be saying to yourself because I'm saying it to myself I don't like this saturation down here it's too saturated so how can I remove just that part well you could go ahead and go on your layer mask then take you know a black brush and just paint that out easy problem solved right got rid of all that saturation very cool but what happens if you decide down the road you know what I actually want to bring a little bit of that saturation back you could come back with your white brush and paint it back in but all of a sudden what's happened is you've lost all of that mask information you lost all that subtle targeting that we created with that curves layer so you could go back and you know recopy the mask again 
to bring that back. Ignore the red. That's just Photoshop's way of telling me we're all about to die. So you could do it that way, or an even better way is you can create a group with that single layer. Uh, and you can hit just Control or Command G, or you can find that in the layer menu under group layers. Now that you've added a group with only that one layer, you can actually apply a layer mask to the group. So if you just hit the layer mask button, now we can paint wherever we paint on the layer mask for the group is going to affect every single layer within the group. Now in this case, there's only one layer in the group, which is that hue saturation layer. Uh, but that's fine because that's the only layer we want to adjust. So if I paint out now, you can see that saturation disappearing. This is what the group layer mask looks like. It's saying, yeah, keep all that saturation here, but knock it all out down here. Except that the saturation is already being applied through this targeted mask, meaning that we don't lose any of that cool information about that mask. So if I decide that I want to bring back some of the saturation to that area, all I got to do is paint back on the mask of my group, and it'll maintain all of this targeted masking information that is present in the hue saturation. So you can bring it back and knock it out. Oh, geez, Louise. Just make sure you're painting on the group layer mask and not on the hue saturation. So that's a real easy, cool way you can maintain layer mask information uh, and still target it, knock it out where you want it, where you don't want it, and bring it back where you do want it. So that's it, guys. Five awesome things you didn't know about layer masks. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. And stay tuned for more videos. Josh Cripps, out!